All right, everyone, welcome back to part three of uh, DeepMind's Neural Stack paper kind of blog post and overview and implementation. And uh, this is part three where we're actually going to build a toy neural stack and discuss how the parts work together and, and how it works. And, and, you know, and the cool part is that we'll, we'll, we'll get one working by the, uh, by the end of this section, which will be great. So um, let's jump right in. We've got a lot to cover. Um, take a look at this picture. This is pulled from the paper. Uh, and this shows the behavior of the stack. Um, and, and we're actually going to end up using this picture as a sort of a unit test to make sure that, that we, we implement it correctly. So, so this has the, the, the state of the stack at three different time steps. Uh, and it actually gives you the, the input data and, and what the, the view of the stack is or, or the value of, of R sub T um, is at each, at each time step. So, so we can actually see sort of data going in, including uh, VT, and then we can see the state of the view on the stack coming out. And that's, that's what's kind of along the bottom here. So now the other interesting thing to, to notice, as far as just high level things to take away, notice that this always gets better, bigger by exactly one. Um, you know, V1, then V1, V2, and then V1, V2, V3. This is very, very interesting. So, so when, I, when I first started implementing this, I, I kind of assumed that when I popped something off the stack that, oh my gosh, it, was, it, it had to go away, right? Like that's how stacks work. But the interesting thing here is this part. This is extremely important. So removing something from the stack actually means setting this value to zero. And that sort of implies what these yellow values are. They're weights. <laughs> so each thing is not on the stack or off the stack discreetly. Each thing is on the stack or off the stack with a degree of weight. So this is this vector times 0.8. That's, it, it's, this, this vector is put onto the stack with a weight of 0.8, with a confidence of 0.8. Um, and in fact, when we read the stack at this time step, we say 0.8 times the value of V1 is the value of, of you know, the, the, the reading uh, hand of, uh, of the stack at this, at this time step. And, and in fact, and later on, we'll see that this, these, this strength is kind of a heart and soul of what, what makes this stack um, work, what makes it continuous and differentiable and, and, and learnable, more or less. Um, so some other things to take away here. Um, U and D. We need to really remember what these are. So as a little, little helpful mnemonic, this is the pushing weight, this is the popping weight. This is closed on top, this is open on top. I kind of think of this as, it's, the U sort of looks like it's been popped open, right? <laughs> and D is closed on the top, so, so, so maybe it's, it's, uh, it's also an upside down P, right? So for push. Um, and remembering what these are is going to be really important. So notice, pushing on 0.8, V1 shows up with a weight of 0.8. Interesting. We're not popping at all, so this isn't doing anything here. Um, the next time step, we're pushing with a weight of 0.5. Okay, so this 0.5 showed up. Oh my gosh, this changed from 0.8 to 0.7. Why did it do that? Well, because we're also popping with a weight of 0.1. And this should tell you something. So if the popping pulled values from this weight and not this one, then that means, you know, are we popping first or are we pushing first? In this case, it means that we're popping first. So we pop from the top of the stack, which happened to be this value, and then we pushed v2 on with a weight of 0.5. And again, we can see this further reiterated here. So we are popping with a weight of 0.9, which brought this 0.5 and 0.7 down to 0 and 0.3. And then we're pushing with a weight of 0.9, which keeps us up here. And so v2 has been completely popped off the stack. And v1 has been reduced in weight, in, in severity of it being on the stack, down to 0.3. Um, and um, Something else is kind of interesting that, that is not explained fully in this, this picture is that R3 equals 0.9, which is the top of the stack, times V3, okay, that makes sense, plus 0 times V2, okay, totally makes sense, plus 0 0.1 times V1. Whoa, wait, is that a typo? Hmm, 0 0.1 times V1, there's a 0 0.3 here. Why is it 0 0.1? Well, as it turns out, 0 0.9, 0 0.1 added together equal 1, the reading arm can't read farther than a unit one of weight into the stack. And that's actually going to be really, really uh, important later on in the implementation. So these are kind of all the high-level details. We will cover all of this again. If you didn't quite get all of this, um, um, yeah, we'll cover it all again. So, so don't, don't worry too much about it. All right. We went through the pretty picture. Time to look at the formula. So here are the three core formulas dictating the operation of the stack. So if you remember from, from the previous lecture, um, VTI is the memory. So it's this big box, right? It has all these VTs in it. So V1, V2, V3, right? 
Um, ST, these yellow guys, they're the strengths, and RT is sort of the reading head, right? So, so it's the value of the stack with respect to whatever's reading it um, at any given time. So, let's dive right in. We're gonna focus on this part. First thing I usually ask myself is, what is the shape of the thing that we're putting it into? So in this case, we're gonna ask, what is the shape of VTI? Now it's capitalized in bold, which means that there's a matrix involved somewhere, right? Um, and, and V itself um, is, is, is a matrix that is indexed by T and, and I. So what does it mean for it to be indexed by both? Um, and, and actually here we see the existence of a V T minus one I, so a, a different, different matrix. So if this is a matrix that has um, two indices like this, but it's still, still a matrix, we can see that the vector also exists like this. This actually means that this, this vector, or the, excuse me, this, this matrix indexed by I, so it has rows that are vectors of, of I, um, this is actually a bunch of matrices. It's T matrices, right? So if V indexed by I um, is a matrix, so VI gives out a vector, then VTI is a bunch of matrices. So what, what does that mean? What, what, is, what is a matrix at T minus one relative to current T? So let's, let's take a look. And, and I is the, the rows in that, in that matrix, uh, just to remember. So I equals one, I equals two, I equals three. That makes sense, so one, two, three, one, two, one. Make sense? And this is VT equals one, VT equals two, VT equals three. So T equals one, T equals two, T equals three, I equals one, I equals two, I equals three. So that's, what, that's what we're looking at down here. So the interesting thing here is that the current time step of V, if we're at the row that is equal to the time step, so if we're at row three and time step three, for example, so like right here, then it's equal to the new addition that we're adding to the, adding to the, the, the step, right? This memory. However, if it's any other row from the bottom all the way up to the top, not including the top, then it's equal to the same thing that was there in the previous time step, right? So, so for all rows that are not on top, so this this is the row that's on top. It's this, it doesn't change from v t minus one to v t. However, if it's the top one, then it's you know whatever vector we just added, and this makes sense, right? So, so basically this says that. We're trying to figure out what vector this is. It's just the same as t minus one, right? And this is the same as t minus one, which is the same as t minus two. Um, however, the top vector changes, right? So the top vector gets added, which is v underscore t. t is time, so time is its two right here. Um, so that's what's going on here. It's actually not really saying much at all. It's basically just saying we always push onto this matrix. And that's actually kind of interesting, right? So we're, we're always pushing. So, you know, when you think, oh, we're building a neural stack, don't we also want to pop? Like, why would we force it to always push? In this case, we are always pushing. And this actually can go back to kind of what we learned right here. So this, this whole weight thing, where we can have something that has been pushed on that's still in there, technically, um, but the, because the strength is zero, it has been removed from the stack. That's sort of the response to the fact that we're pushing everything onto to this matrix here. Um, over over time, which is pretty cool. So, um, quick trivia question. How many rows is this going to have at t equals three? It's gonna have three rows because we've pushed vt onto it three times. The movie. All right. So, when i equals t, that means we're at the top. If i is between one and t, we are in the middle. And let's jump to the next one. So, strength, strength vector. Now this one is a little bit hairier. So let's let's start with what we know. DT, remember our, our kind of U versus D conundrum, right? So this is this is the push weight, the amount that we're pushing onto stack. We have these same conditionals that we saw up here, right? So if I equals T, that means we're on the top. If I is between one and T, then we are in the stack somewhere, so there's stuff above us, um, which is kind of different. So when we're on top, S at that index is just equal to whatever we pushed on. If we look up in this example, we can see, okay, um, when we push on point eight, this is always equal to point eight. We push on point five, this is equal to point five. When we push on point nine, this is equal to point nine, right? So, so, 
So basically, whatever we push on doesn't get changed. It's just it is that. Um, however, if it's something we pushed on farther into the past, then it is subject to considerably more complexity here, right? So if if t equals three, then this section right here is talking about one and two, or one and two, I guess you say, since it's talking about the strength. So it's what is the value of this and this determined by this function, right? Because i is between one and t. So the row is between one and however deep the stack is, you know, and what in what time step we're at. So let's break this down. Now, I usually like to start with the most inner part of the function. In this case, that's this sum right here. And as you can see, it's conditional on what the strength vector used to be, right? So st minus one. So if we're at t equals three, which is this box right here, st minus one is the previous one. So it's the value of 0.5 and 0.7 in this case, right? So this is a sum signal. So we're summing over several values of uh, these guys, right? So let's, let's pretend that i equals one and t equals three. So we're trying to compute this value because we're at the first row, one, at time step, three. So what would the value of this sum be? Well, it's the sum from i plus one to t minus one. So it's actually just the sum over two because I, I, one plus one is two, right? <laughs> and three minus one is also two. So we're just gonna sum over you know, one vector in the previous time domain. So this equals 0.5, interesting, okay? So this is equals 0.5. Now, well, what does this really, really equal? Well, what this really sums is the sum total of all the strengths that are above this value from the previous time step, right? So if this was a stack that was, you know, 50 things deep, right? This would sum, go to the previous time step and sum all of the weights that are above it. And they just, you know, aside from the, 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 um, the one that you're just pushing on. So it's really, it's, it's just all the weights that were, that are above you. And we're going to take ut and subtract from that. You know what ut was? So this is why it's really good to memorize those variables early on. So ut, as you recall, is the pop weight. So it's the amount that we want to remove from the stack. Now, how do we remove things from the stack again? Well, we decrease the value of the strength. We're trying to set the value of the strength. So, so now we're, we're, we're seeing the relationship between how much we pop something and what its inevitable strength at that location will be. So. It's ut, the amount that we're popping, minus the depth that we are currently at. And the depth is computed by the sum total of the weights that are above us. So in this case, 0.5 is above v1, right? ut equals 0.9. So 0.9 minus 0.5 equals da da da, -da 0.4. Interesting. So. We're actually there at that point, believe it or not. Um, so, so that, that that was like most of the logic. This this stuff kind of just takes care of some formalities that we'll we'll get to in a second. So, this equals 0.4. Max was zero, so obviously it's bigger than zero, so it's still 0.4. And then we're gonna take st minus one at this index. So the previous value, 0.7 minus 0.4 equals 0.3. Dun, 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 dun. So, what is this really doing? This is decreasing it, the val the current value at this row, so the current time t of this row, from 0.7 to 0.3. And why is it doing that? Because, because when we took the amount that we were popping off and subtracted the depth that this is sitting, not including 0.9, so the depth at, at the previous time step, we still had 0.4 to pop off when we got to, v, to v1. That's what this is doing. This is saying, okay, ut, we're popping off this much. This is how much is above us, that means that we're, we're gonna pop off some more, right? Now, the reason this is a max is that, in, you know, in, the, in this case, uh, or actually in the case here, right, so where, where this was 0.5 before and we had to subtract 0.9, this would have been a negative number, but we don't wanna have negative strengths, so that's why we kind of set these, these maxes to, to, to equal zero. Um, 
uh, which is great. So that's what this does. This sets the new value of the strength, and it either sets it to what we're pushing on, or it sets it to whatever the previous value was minus the amount that we're popping off at that level, at that depth in the stack. So that's kind of the story of, of what this, this little formula is doing. And let's scroll down to... We talk about this one a lot. Um, talk about it a lot, talk about it a lot. All right, the reading. So now this is where we combine the logic that we do these two to figure out what does it look like when our neural net sees the stack, when it, when it asks for, okay, hey, give me one vector that describes everything that's going on in the stack. Call that vector R sub T. So it's the state of the stack at RT. So it's not actually all the contents, but it's, it's the view that the neural network will end up having of the stack. That's what RT is. So what is this sum? This should look really familiar with one tiny difference, okay? So instead of summing the depth not including the top, this time we're summing the depth including the top. So what does that mean? Um, if we're at this level, at the current time step, we're going to sum the ones that are above, right? We're going to give us that weight. We're going to take one minus that weight, right? No less than what we were before. We're going to multiply it by that row of ETI. So at a high level, um, we're going to take this, or excuse me, starting from the top, we're going to take V3, multiply it by 0.9, V2 by 0 0.0. And then because of this one right here, we're only going to take 0.1 out of this strength and multiply it times V1. And the reason for that is because when you, when you kind of combine these, this min and max logic and this one minus, it makes it so that we can only pull off a weight one strength when put when building R3, right? So that is why um, this one exists, and that's kind of what this formula is doing. It's digging out, you know, 1.0 depth from this stack, which is pretty cool. So I started kind of putting in code snippets here. When we literally just write these formulas in code, it works, which is pretty cool. And, and so we have an intuitive understanding of, of why it works, what it's doing. And then we write it out into a couple functions. We can test it out. That's what we've done here. Now, the, the cool thing is that um, because they gave us these, these operations, right, we can actually sanity check at the bottom here with these assertions that, you know, given the exact correct setup, that it gives the same output. And that's really what we do here. So we can hit run, although it's, it, it runs when you load it. Uh, and you can see that the final value of s was 0 0.30.9, which is 0 0.9. And the value of, say, like the, the final push and pop was 0 0.9 times uh, v2, 0 times v1, and 0 0.1 times v0. Now, um, something I should talk about here. So um, one interesting thing about these ranges, um, see how it goes from 1 to t? That's sort of a giveaway that this was prototyped in torch or some other language that uses one as the base indexing so I think uh, R does too um, and uh, although <laughs> I, I kind of doubt that this is prototype um, using R deep mind because I think they're in their torch shop but um, um, we're doing this in Python so Python is indexed by zero whereas R and torch are indexed using one um, so we're going to have to make a couple modifications, um, and, and these have already been made in, in RT and ST um, that, that, that I've kind of laid out and defined. Uh, and you can take a look at them. It really just means subtracting one in the right places, um, and I'm, I'm still going to index at zero um, because it's kind of best practices for, for Python. Um, so, yeah, and there's kind of a line-by-line -line breakdown of what the code does, and um, I hope that you kind of grokked a... a more intuitive understanding of what's really going on in the stack architecture. I encourage you, please, take apart this code, break it, play with it, um, and, um, and enjoy it. And you know, put some different vector values in, see what you get, um, change around the weights that you push a pop on, and, and just you know, really get to know this part because this is, this is the meat. Like, this is the neural stack. We're going to hook up other stuff to this stack to control it, to learn to control it, but when we say you know, DeepMind's neural stack, this is the neural stack. This is, this is, this is kind of the, the innards of it. We're going we're gonna to polish it and make it nicer and all that stuff, but, but this is really, really the meat of what's going on. So, um, so yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll get into part four here in a second.